So previously I had uh, mentioned uh, storyboards and I said you can easily look them up online but here's an example uh, that I was working on just to show you also along with you I'm going to be working on that. So um, I left it in my office but I'll bring it back a little later if you want to see it in person. So out of the eight panels uh, I've got a story here and you're going to make a movie. We'll see the details of what the movie is in a little bit. but. It's going to be a minimum of 30 seconds long. And you'll think, well, 30 seconds, that's nothing. I can tell such a great story in 30 minutes. That's nice, but you're going to have, you know, one week to work on this. You're not going to be able to make a 30-minute movie in one week. So think about in terms of what can you accomplish in that short time. In the example here, I've got my idea is I'm going to make an animation that there, there's some title text that says Space Quest Part 3. Well, where's Part 1 and 2? That's part of the story, that something happened before now, and I'm filling in the people's heads that way. This is part three. Ah, I'm writing in, I'm writing in uh, a little bit of text here. I'm saying the title that will appear is Space Quest 3, voice over a person. Maybe I'll do that, maybe not. A person is going to say the name of the movie, and the music, the main theme, is going to play. We'll talk about music in a moment. Then I'm going to have a shot. I wrote, scene, space and planet. Uh, the hero's ship comes into view toward the planet. So how I'm going to animate it and how it's going to move and all of that, I'll figure it out. But the big idea is I want an establishing shot. There's my staging of a planet. And then the character ship comes into view. Next, it's a scene. Uh, horizon and ruins. Hero's ship lands. She gets out, walks toward the ruins. So I'm going to draw a horizon, some sort of ruins, the ship is going to land, that's the big idea, how I'll do it exactly, I'll work on that, and then she's going to walk toward the ruins. Then another scene, another shot, uh, long corridor, hero walks toward the light. So I'm going to do a walk cycle, the character's going to walk into the long corridor, light is coming from it, everything else is dark. Uh, also below all of this, I've started some music that is going to play throughout to a certain point, so the main music. Then uh, scene, space, ja space gem chamber, hero in profile reaches toward gem. So the character is going to reach toward the gem, that's the same character I did in the model sheet, reaching toward the gem, and then point of view, uh, full frontal, hero, happy, reaches toward gem. So I'm going to draw the character frontal view reaching toward the gem. Different kind of music here. Suspense. And then the next shot. POV. Full frontal still. Hero unhappy stops as creature reaches toward her. So then the music shuts off and instead there's a growling sound. So a creature appears before the main character shadowing her and then Title to be continued. Voiceover and a different music. The same title. That's it. That's my goal for the 30 second animation. Yeah, quote unquote, nothing happens. That's fine. I have a goal of a 30 second long animation. I have the idea of a big battle and all of that, but I don't think I'll be able to animate all of that in one week. Again, pace yourself. You probably have a great idea, but what can you accomplish in the time you're going to get? Which will be, you know, lab time today all the way until past spring break, until the Monday the 3rd. So I'll talk about the details of the assignment soon, but that's an idea for a storyboard. There's already one turned in and it's very close to that. There's no real, real explanation on some of these lines of what's really going on. I would like that, but if you can get across what is happening just visually, that might be okay. If you're still working on your storyboard, think about that too. Maybe write a couple notes about what else is happening. In your mind, it's perfect. But when you turn it in, and if I don't quite get it, you know, it's not that I'm going to lower your grade or anything, but if I don't get it, when you turn that in, it might not quite be a planned out animation as well as it could be. Any questions on the storyboard? Okay, let's do a uh, couple more things here. Uh, music. I had mentioned that you can get music from YouTube uh, if you create an account. 
So, at some point, if you would like, I would recommend you go to YouTube and you sign in. So you want to sign in uh, to a YouTube account. Let me just sign in here quickly. The thing about YouTube is that it um, it's got two big purposes. One is as one is a consumption site and one is a creation site. Most people use it for consumption, meaning I go to YouTube and I want to consume, I want to watch a video all day long. Other people use YouTube as a creation platform. I want to create videos on YouTube. Because if you didn't know, you can actually make money off of YouTube when you upload videos. And if you get popular and all of that, you can make money from your YouTube videos. Unless you have strikes, uh, strikes, but try to avoid getting strikes. Um, so I personally have a couple of YouTube channels of my own, and I manage some for other people. And I've been making some money off of YouTube. I'm making around, you know, not to show off or anything, but about twenty dollars a month off of YouTube. That's a latte and a half, of course, but those things add up, uh, making fun videos that people are watching. Well, when you've got a YouTube account. At the top right corner, you have the option to go to the Creator Studio. Maybe you never looked on that screen before, but the Creator Studio is um, where you can go to see your videos and all that. Look at that, a dollar off of YouTube today. But anyway, on the Creator Studio, on the left side, then you'll have Create. And under Create, <coughs> the most important thing there is that you've got a variety of music for free that you can use, as well as sound effects. So thousands of free songs in a variety of styles that you can download and import into your anime project, as well as sound effects. As I said in my storyboard, I'm going to have a couple of different sounds playing. And then at a certain point, I'm going to have this creature growling. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to find a growl sound effect. But under this free music, let me play this for a moment. So this one. This one. So all of these free songs for you to use. You, you go to YouTube, you probably already have a YouTube account, you just sign in, and then you go to Create Audio Library, and then you just click the download. Yes? Um, before we ever talk how to do the, the, the soundboard, um, kind of fade out? No. Um, the thing is that with with Animate, their sound editing features are very basic, but basically when you, uh, I might show it in a moment, but remind me in a moment, but basically we put the music into Animate, and when you select it, there's a property that has fade in, fade out. So there is a basic way to do that, we'll, we'll see. Let's see, sound effects. Is there a growl sound effect that I wanna use? I've got animal bark and growl. Monster alien growl tense. Maybe that's the one I need for my animation. Monster alien growl calm. I don't know how something could be growling at you and is calm at the same time. Cats? Even if cats are growling, they're not calm. It's a purr. That doesn't sound calm at all. But that's supposedly monster alien growl calm. Calmly thinking about eating you. Cat purr. Anyway, so those are, uh, that's what I wanted to mention about YouTube. You can go to the Creator Studio. Once you log in, you click on the top right corner, you go to Creator Studio. Then you'll have all of these 
audio files to work with. One of the requirements of the final, uh, not the final, but the uh, project for this month, the final project for this month, is music. So I gave you a couple of sounds previously. You can use those sounds if you want. I got them from here anyway, but I would recommend you go find the perfect song, the perfect sound for your project in the YouTube audio library. Any questions on, on the YouTube audio library? I would not recommend getting your, a song from your favorite artist. I would not go to your, your iTunes and just grab that song. I would not recommend go to your Google Play and just grab your favorite song from there. Those are copyrighted. Those are problematic. Copyright, a copyrighted song means someone has the right to copy it. You don't have the right to copy it. Even though you paid a whole 99 cents for it, if you pay for it, 99 cents is not a give you the copyright to use your song, use that song, that famous song, however you want. These songs are set up for you to be able to use them however you want without copyright problems. So I recommend you use these. And even if we try to say, well, I want to use that famous song uh, in my movie, it really fits really well, and it's just for a school project. You know, I'll believe you, of course, but tell it to the judge. So instead of getting into that problem, just use the right sound. Or ask someone from the music department to make a song for you. Oh yeah, we've got a whole music department. They would want to maybe get the word out for their music. If your video goes viral and their song is in it, they'd like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any contacts in the music department? No. We can walk over, have a field trip, and ask for free music. <laughs> All right, so, yes? Um, so, our videos, do, do they have to have speech as well? Or no, no okay. the uh, lip syncing part of it will be extra credit. Okay. So if you want any speech, you can add it, but it'll be extra credit. All right, so let me log out of that. Uh, here's the last couple of little things I want to show you in Animate. And then we will, um, then you'll have time. You'll have pretty much the rest of the day to work once we do one more thing. And then I hope to see some really cool animations. get this file out of the network folder, then we'll start. Well, I guess I'll let that happen in the... Oh, there it is. Okay, so I just wanted uh, a sound just to show you a little bit later. This is optional. I just want to confirm this. But uh, here's what we'll do really fast. So go ahead and create a new Action Script 3 file right here, Action Script 3. Um, this will be super quick test. So remember, set this to your usual size, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to save it with today's date. 1920 by 1080. One of the things that uh, is very popular to do are uh, visual fade-ins and visual fade-outs. I want, you know, something to appear on screen as a fade-in and then at the very end of the project to fade out. So I'm going to show you that, how to animate some fading it's still going to be a tween, a classic tween, because what I want to show is a dark screen and have that tween or animate to a white screen, or vice versa, or any color. Maybe my character is walking through fog. Well, it would be nice if it looks like the character is fading in. That's often the effect of fog in animation. You know, I'm walking toward the camera, the fog starts to fade away. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's say at the very beginning here, I want the scene to start on, uh, on a black background and fade into a white background. There's lots of ways to do this, but here's one way. If I first uh, create a black square to cover everything, then I can fade that black square invisible. So I'm going to get the uh, rectangle tool, 
and set the stroke to nothing and set the fill to black. I will draw a rectangle as big as my stage. A little bit larger doesn't matter because it'll cut off anyway. But I'm going to draw a big black square on top of my stage. So I want the scene to be black and fade into white. I drew a black square. To do any of this tweening, I, I, need, uh, I need symbols. Remember from our library, symbols. Um, so, that black square that I just drew, I'm going to select it to convert it into a symbol. Because what animate can do is take a symbol and then tween it to something else. So I've drawn the square, I've selected it, and then on the keyboard I'll hit F8. So that'll convert the thing that you drew into a symbol. We looked at symbols before. When we drew, uh, when we did the walk cycle, we did the little guy walking in a symbol. So the animation of the walking happened in the symbol, and then I copied an instance of the symbol onto the library, and I made three guys walking. Well, symbols are very, very useful because it helps us animate. I'm going to call this symbol uh, black BG, black background. And I'm going to change the type to graphic. That's the kind we've been using before and will continue to use. So black box, press F8 to convert to a symbol. Give it whatever name, but make sure the type is graphic. On screen, things changed a little bit. I get a border around my object. On my properties, it says you've got a graphic, no longer a shape, no longer a basic shape. It's a graphic symbol. So my setup is I'm creating a black square. I'm turning it to a symbol. Now I'm going to animate the symbol. I'll go to frame 50 and press F6. F6 copies the previous frame. We're going to start with a black square that is fully visible and animate it into a square that is fully invisible. So F6 copied the previous frame. I'm going to click on the symbol, the object. I'm going to click on the symbol on frame 50. The properties say I've got it selected. And then I'll go to color effect. There's a whole world of effects we can apply to elements once they're a symbol under color effect. So select it with the select tool, and then you'll see properties, color effect. We have some styles here. The style I want is alpha, and that's the fancy way of saying transparency. Right now it's fully visible. I want frame one to be the black square fully visible, and frame 50 to be the square fully invisible. So drag that to zero. So the idea is the black square will fade away to reveal your scene once we tween it, because it's going to go from frame 1 to 50 with no animation. So anywhere in between frames 1 and 50, right click, so somewhere like on frame 20, right click between the two keyframes create classic tween. And now what happens if I go back to frame one and just do a, uh, an enter to animate it, that's going to fade away. So this is how I can start my movie. I want it to be black, I want it to fade in, then the movie starts. Scene two, for example. If I want the fade to be faster or slower, I just need to vary how many frames. Right now, 50 frames is approximately two seconds. If I want a fade that takes you know, five seconds, one second, I need to do a little of the math to then figure out how long to make that. So if I want a five second long fade, 24 frames times five seconds is 120 frames. 
I would drag that ending frame, click, and then drag to frame 120. Or if I know in the beginning, frame 1 and then frame 120, F6. If I want it to happen really fast, just one second, I only need it at 24 frames. So if I wanted to extend this to take longer, I want this to go to 75 frames. You can go in between the keyframes and press F5 to add more frames to push it to 75. So now this animation is going to take about three seconds to play. Fades in slower. On the opposite, I want it to take less frames. So I can select a bunch of frames, right click, remove frames. F5 inserts a frame, and they should list it here. But F5 inserts a frame, and Shift F5 removes a frame. I want to remove a bunch of frames. I select them. I can then right click, remove frames. Or I can select them, and then on the keyboard, Shift F5. And the point of removing frames is that then it goes faster. So now instead of going one second, or five seconds or whatever I had, now it goes to one second. So whatever amount of time you want. Fade in. So that's one of the ideas. The other idea is coming up right now. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? You've got a box that then becomes alpha zero at a certain point. Yes, it is alpha five. Get it? No one? OK. And then it goes from uh, fully visible to fully invisible. <clears throat> the last thing that I'll mention is uh, we can animate something moving, and it can follow a path. So like my idea is, on my animation, there's going to be a ship that flies around, and it's going to land on a planet. So to have a ship following a path, that's a motion guide. So I'm going to save what I have so far. And I want to do this on scene two. I've got scene one, and I want to go to scene two. Go to your window menu, and then scene. And I'll create a new scene. Victor? Yes. Uh, one moment. Could you replay your layer one for me? Sure. It should animate like that. OK, so it's black to white. So I've got a scene one, and I'll create a scene two. On scene two, I want to make a very simple ship fly around. I want it to go from the left to the right, but not in a straight line. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. So if each one of these is a scene one? No, uh, the terminology is very similar that it makes it sound like that, but uh, you can literally use scenes in animate or keep it all on one scene. It's just that the idea here is there's a scene or a shot where we're looking at this, another shot or angle or scene of looking at that. So it doesn't have to be every scene is a square, but it could be. So on my second scene, uh, I want to make a little ship. I want to animate it. Now, uh, we've been saying that we should use a symbol uh, so that we can tween it. If we want the computer, if we want animate to animate it for us, we need symbols. Most of the time, we're going to animate it ourselves with our own, you know, with our own two hands. So, if we want animate to help us, we need a symbol. This time, instead of drawing it and converting it to a symbol. I want to make it a symbol first, right away. So I'll go to the library. Either or will work. 
draw it and turn it to a symbol, or make a symbol first and then draw it. Draw it. So in the library, we'll click on the new symbol button at the bottom. We get a new symbol. I'm going to call it ship. Type of graphic. Click OK. I'm going to draw a very simple ship with the brush tool. There's a little target right there. That target in the center, when we animate this and when we make it follow a path, is going to be important because it depends how you draw your ship. Maybe I'm going to draw a ship that looks something like this. And you see the tip of the ship is near that point. Or maybe I'm going to draw a ship that's more symmetrical in the center. You know, something like this. So the idea is that we've got somewhere in the center is uh, when we animate the path, it'll be attached to that point. And it follows this line that we set up. So I'm going to draw some kind of ship. You can either draw it in profile or full frontal. And I've changed this just enough so that I don't get sued. It's not a, it's not a TIE fighter. It's a T fighter. It's an H fighter. So I've got some sort of ship. I drew this inside the symbol in the ship symbol. I'm inside the symbol over here. I'm in the ship inside of scene two. I'll press back to go back out to the regular scene. And now what I'll do is I'll drag a copy of the instance. I'll drag an instance of the symbol that is I'm going to drag the ship over here on the left, outside of the canvas. I want it to fly into view, kind of fly around a little bit, and then go to the side over here. So first I'll put the ship on the top left. It's a little too small. I'll just resize it. So an instance of the ship that I drew somewhere on the left. I'll go to frame 75, and I'll press F6. F6 copies the previous frame, the previous keyframe, so that I can change it, so that I can tween it. So on frame 75, I'll press F6. I'll move it over to the right side over here somewhere. starts at the top left, frame 75 ends at the bottom right. In between, I want the computer to animate this for me. I want it to tween it. I want it to draw the in-between frames. So that's when I can right-click anywhere in the center, create class of tween. So I get a, a ship that flies in a perfectly straight line. If I need to make an animation that does something like that, I'm done. But if I want to be more complex, I want it to fly around and dodge some asteroids and all of that, then now I need a motion guide. I need a path that I can draw that it will follow. Go this way, then this way, then this way. So the way this will work is I'll go back to frame one I've got layer one, I should call it ship. I should also lock it. So the idea is I first made a very basic tween, starting and I'm gonna lock the layer. Then I'm gonna right click the layer and I have a an option, add classic motion guide. So this will give me a new special layer that will attach itself to my animation here, where I can then draw with the brush tool or the pencil or, the, or anything like that, where I can then draw a guide for it to follow. 
So add classic motion guide. I get a brand new layer, like I said. Guide layer. Frame one of the guide. Question. So I've got a ship layer that just travels in a straight line, and I've just added a guide layer. And the point of this is that then I can get like the brush tool or the pencil or whatever, and now I can draw some sort of path. Now I'm not going to make it too crazy at the moment, but I'm going to draw something like this. The ship is going to go in an S, something like that. It'll think about it for a moment, and it hopefully then it'll put the ship on the line. I have the ship here. I drew the line here, after I drew it, animate moved the ship onto that line. Now the thing about these guides is that sometimes they work really well, and sometimes they don't. This guide is going to be part of the homework as extra credit, because we will see sometimes we're going to struggle with this. My idea is I want the ship to follow that path. Let's see if it worked. Nope. It jumped the track. So here's the way to fix it. Yours might have worked just fine. If it didn't work, here's how you fix it. I'm going to um, lock. Now, the problem of mine might have also been that it seemed like my, uh, it seems that my, my line was cut right there. Yeah, that's odd. OK, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to redraw my line. In my case, my line. Uh, cut right there for some reason. I'm going to go back, undo that, I'm going to draw it one more time. Oh, it's still kind of cutting my line. Okay, I'll just use a plain old pencil then. might be better with a pencil. With a pencil, with the style of pencil set to smooth, I drew the line. I put the ship there. Why did it put it there? Because remember when I drew the graphic, the little cross symbol was in the center of the graphic. If I've got a, a ship that's in profile, it may also uh, be something to look at. But let's see, did mine work? No, it's still jumping the track. OK, so the way I'm going to fix that is with the select tool on the ship layer the starting point I'm gonna move the ship so that it attaches to the line and you'll see it that when I'm when I move the ship near the line it will jump onto the line you'll see it you'll, you'll, you'll feel it so I'm moving the ship to where I should start and it should jump then at the end I'm gonna also move the ship so that it jumps onto the line right there it's stuck onto the line it helps also to have the, uh, the magnet. This is one of the few times the magnet really works. Usually I hate that magnet, but here it's really useful so that I can move the ship and, it might, and I make sure it attaches to the line. When you get close to the line, you should jump onto it. You want to make sure it's on it on frame 1 and frame 75. That you've moved your ship so that it jumps onto the line. <coughs> and then now hopefully, if I play it, there we go. That's actually following the line. 
run it like this. I got my fade in. There's a daring space battle. If I drew some asteroids in a def separate layer, that would look even better. If I drew other ships chasing him, that would be even better. So the ship has followed a path. Instead of a straight line that we saw a moment ago, it's following my path. It would be best to use a pencil instead of a brush to draw your path. And once you've got this animation, and you click anywhere in the tween, you have some options here for tweening. Remember, you've got your ease to smooth it in, smooth it out as it, as it animates. Add rotate, that one's fun. It doesn't always apply, but if I put rotate clockwise, the ship is going to do one rotation as it goes through the, the path. So he's doing some advanced maneuvers right there. I can do a rotate and have it rotate five times. And so he's going to get dizzy rotating. Uh, oh, get your next time, Skywalker. With no rotation, it stays like that. And then one more thing here, uh, orient to path. This one depends on how you drew your, your ship. I drew it straight on, full frontal. If you drew it profile, you might get an interesting result here. I'm going to turn on orient to path. The idea is that the ship will kind of rotate around in the direction of where the path is, kind of. It's not as cool as you might think sometimes, but sometimes it works well. So I'll try orient to path, and huh, so it kind of rotates around a little bit like that doesn't quite make sense for my ship, but maybe on some of your ships it makes more sense. So this guide, this is also part of the homework, as extra credit. If you make your elements move along a guide like this, it needs a little bit of setup. It can be very finicky sometimes. It doesn't uh, follow your path exactly. That's why it's extra credit. It looks like the best way that it'll work is if you use a pencil on ink to make your path, and then use your move tool to make sure it snaps onto the path. Lastly, just to check this with music, I'm going to do a very quick thing. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to import a sound file. Music is a big topic that we don't have the time to do a lot of it, but let me just check this. Remember, if music is a requirement, and you're going to need it to be on stream. So you have some basic sound editing tools, nothing that great in Animate. But if you, if you have a sound added to a layer, the properties will show effects. There's no effects. There's no effects. Uh, but here I can select very simply some fades. So fade, fade in the music, fade out the music, no matter the length of it. So if I do a fade out, on that sound file, it doesn't sound like it suddenly cuts out. So you have some basic fades. You can do left channel, right channel, so here's something on the left speaker, right speaker. And you've got custom, which gives you this really lame editor. I'm so surprised that they still haven't made this editor better and animate, but here's a way for you to crop a sound, do a fade in and all of that. It's just so unintuitive. The way it works is if I wanted to cut out a part of the sound, I grab this left edge and pull it here, and then now I've cropped out that part of the sound. 
So that shows right here. I cropped out the beginning. Well, the part of it that's really lame is that when you want to do these, you know, cut out or to remove, you have to go to the right edge and drag the right edge. Well, the right edge is all the way over here. So if I wanted to drag that out, I don't even see the right edge. So I have to zoom out. I have to zoom out to find the ending of it. So I've zoomed out so far to see all the way over here that my animation at the moment only uses the sound up to that point, and then the rest goes on. There's the left ending edge. I then drag that back to the left, and that'll crop the sound. But if I want some intelligent cropping of, I only want this piece, good luck, because this thing is just not very good at all about selecting your sound. You can set this as time, or you can set it as frames. If you zoom in, it'll actually show you some meaningful frame markers. And so the idea here is you can put a sound into its own layer, make sure it's on stream, and then you can go on effects to edit, and you can crop your sound a little bit, fade it in, fade it out. After your animation is totally done, then you have to export it as a, as a finished movie file. We've done that before, but I'll do it one more time to remind you. you let's say my movie is done. I'm going to go to File, and this is in the handout for the homework but it's in file, export, export video. That's going to export as an MOV file, which we then need to convert one more time in the media encoder. It's all built in here. I've chosen to export. It'll save it to my flash drive or whatever. I'm going to click export. It will open then a media encoder, and I have to do one more encoding in the media encoder. I click the green play button, and then it'll finish it. Those are the couple more things I wanted to mention. You can do these fade in, fade outs with a black, a black shape or a red shape or whatever. You have a motion guide that you could do. You could have music with a little bit of editing music. And then you've got the export. Yes. Well, uh, let me help you in just a moment. Uh, let me finish my thought, and we're going to do the lab time in just a moment. Uh, the final thing to say, and then I'll give you time to work the rest of the day, is if you take a look at the at uh, Blackboard, I have the the assignment there. Um, don't print while while I'm talking about it just yet. But if you take a look at Blackboard, we'll go over the assignment for a bit, and then you'll have time to work. Blackboard in the assignments section. You've got the topic two, movie. Our topic one was the model sheet. Our topic two is the movie. If you view that PDF for all the details, Based on the Adobe Animate topics we learned, you will create an animation that shows off your talents. You'll use the character you created in topic one. So those model sheets, you're going to use that character. You're set up. You're going to create a folder on your own flash drive just to keep all of this together. 
Uh, you're going to create a new action script 3 file like we did, like we've been doing. You're going to set it to HD size like we've been doing. You're going to keep it at 24 frames as we've been doing. After you complete the requirements below, then you're going to export it as an MP4. The requirements. Create a movie about any topic that would be safe to show the general public because you're going to turn this in by presenting it to the class. So think about that. Other people will see it. It must be at least 30 seconds long. It can be longer, but no extra credit is given for that. So if you make you know, a 20 minute long opus, that's very nice, but that doesn't give you any extra credit. It must use the character you created for topic one. So we spent time creating those model sheets. You've got a full frontal view, a profile view, a three quarter view. You've got the turnaround model, hopefully then, that will help you in this project. So you need to use the character you created before. Uh, you need to animate a walk cycle. Depending on your character, some of that might be easier or harder than others. But you're going to need to make your character walk. How much? I, I don't know, but you've got 30 seconds to work with. You know, it could be two seconds of walking, whatever, but I want to see a walk cycle for that character. Animate a parallax scrolling background. Remember that lesson where we had mountains moving and the clouds moving at different speeds? That was the parallax scrolling. So have your character moving, have the background moving. Use the camera tool. Remember we spent time about that mouse versus the cat. We had the camera move around a little bit. So use that camera tool. Use one music file. Remember to set it to sync stream. You know, if you're going to do different sound files, that's fine. One is the minimum. And then when the project is complete, you go to File, Export, Export Video. It'll create an MOV file. Then it'll open up Adobe Media Encoder, where you, then you have to do one more conversion. It'll turn it into an MP4, a more efficient MP4 file, and that's your final file. Extra credit. You can use scenes. If you use one, if you just use scene one, with the main timeline, that's fine. If you break it up in Animate to use different scenes, you can get extra credit. The way you're going to claim that extra credit is by showing me your file. I can't tell if you used scenes if I simply play your video. I have to see your file. That'll be up to one point. Add a classic motion guide to a classic motion tween. That can be up to two points. What we just did right now about that ship flying around the path that's extra credit, because sometimes it doesn't quite work and you're going to waste your time. So if you get that to work, you can get up to two points. And then lip sync. If you want to make your character speak based on mouth movements and all of that, the mouth charts, you can get up to two points. So you can get five more points on top of the points you got on the stuff that's required. If you spent a lot of time getting the extra credit stuff working, the lip sync, but you didn't use the camera tool, you didn't use parallax scrolling, you didn't do a walk cycle. That two points is not going to make up for like the seven points you'll lose here. So make sure you do the, the requirements first. You'll be graded on your ability to apply these concepts that we've learned this month on an original character animation of your own. You will present this movie to the class after spring break. You're going to have the whole spring break to work on it. When I'm done talking, you'll have time to work on it, and then you'll also uh, have time to work on it. Question? What if our character doesn't have legs? I think yours has a little tail, and you can animate the tail a little bit, like as it's moving and then wiggling. It doesn't have legs. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's like a little tadpole? Tadpoles don't have legs, but they move pretty well. Watch some videos of tadpoles and see how that works. So after the spring break, we're going to have time for you to present this project. Uh, you, you probably made a very cool thing. You probably want to share it. So the way that will work is uh, after spring break on that Monday the 3rd, uh, by 10.30 or so, your project should be ready to go. You should not still be working an, on it on Monday uh, in April. It'll be ready to go and basically very easy. You'll come up here. You'll play your movie. Maybe talk a little bit about it, what inspired you, whatever. We'll watch it. We'll give you praise and you're done. So I need to see it, then I'll grade it, you'll get your points. It's up to 25 points for a perfect grade. No late work is accepted on that big project.
that's the topic to movie. So questions on on that. All right, so I'll give you time to work the rest of the day. Uh, ask yes. Is this, uh, is this saved in a folder? Is this, uh, it's in Blackboard. I'll put it in the folder in a moment, but it's definitely in Blackboard. So if you need help, call me or Angie, or if any of our, our, of our lab crew shows up, you can ask them. Uh, tablets are here for you to check out if you'd like. Uh, you'll be able to work, and uh, that's it. So.